welcome to my channel. My name is Claire Bremner. I'm a full-time professional artist based in Melbourne um, and I like to post videos on YouTube showing behind the scenes of my life and things that I get up to. So if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button so that you see future videos when they come up. Uh, if you're a, a long time follower, then hello. I'm um, just starting off this video by giving you a bit of behind the scenes sneak peek at a recent five day um, acrylic painting workshop that I taught up in Queensland on the Gold Coast a few weeks ago. Um, this is run by Artable. Uh, I do all of my interstate workshops with Artable um, because they're just a fantastic company and I've been with them for many years now. And so this is one of the five day workshops that I do and it's mainly based around basic acrylic painting techniques and also trying to loosen up your style of painting and I get a lot of students that come to these classes that have a little bit of experience painting but they want to loosen up or they have no experience painting whatsoever and they want the basics and how to sort of begin. Um, so that's what this class is really good at. So I just take them through um, five days of um, little projects like this particular little, these flowers, these were just little um, half an hour sketches that we did. Uh, we taped all the paper together and then treated it as one big piece, <laughs> um, which is something that I do quite a lot. Uh, we painted flowers, we painted landscapes, we painted from reference photos and also from life. Um, I just wanted to give everybody in the class a chance to um, experiment and play around with acrylic paint and also push themselves to obviously loosen up and show them how to actually get a painting from you know a sketch or a reference photo to a finished painting what the steps are involved and how I approach that process which is different for everybody so um, I always tell my students that what I teach in this class isn't necessarily the only way to do it it's just the way that I do it um, and so they can take with them whatever information they need and move on with their own art, you know, in whatever direction they want to take it. But it's a really great um, beginner class um, and also a class that if you do have experience um, painting already and you want to loosen up or get a bit more expressive with your artwork, it's great for those artists as well. And I am there several times a year, so make sure you look up the Artable website if you're interested. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be chatting about some um, abstract art elements. Uh, but first I needed to clean up my space. Uh, as you can see, this is one of my working tables in my studio and it was a mess. So I had to clean this up first because I needed to package up some artworks. I am really, really bad at keeping my spaces tidy. I'm not a tidy artist. I'm not a tidy person. I am always, everything is in chaos. So. Uh, often I have to do this kind of de-stash or clean up of my areas. So I, the first thing I had to do when I got to my studio was clean up. Uh, then I had a few paintings to package up and um, get ready for shipping that had sold while I was away. So I did that. And then once I have finished that, I decided that I was going to work on some abstract art because I've really been feeling the urge to explore um, some more abstract pieces, which is something that I, I come back to quite often. Um, I primarily paint with, you know, in landscape or uh, still life or, you know, nature inspired stuff. So even my abstract artwork is still quite nature inspired. Uh, and I sort of swing between wanting to paint sort of more realism, representational lam um, landscapes, and then swinging back the other way and wanting to do more expressive and semi abstract artworks. So I was kind of in this mood where I wanted to paint something a bit more expressive and abstract. So once I had this table nice and clean, I taped down six sheets of A3 paper. So this is uh, just watercolour paper, it's 300 GSM, so it's quite heavy weight. It's hot pressed uh, because I prefer to paint with a smooth textured paper. And I just started layering colours and patterns and shapes. And while I was doing this, I was thought to myself, this would actually be a really good chance to talk a bit about abstract painting and what I enjoy about it and some of the um, ideas behind it that I find really useful because abstract painting can be quite challenging for a lot of people, especially if you don't have something tangible that you're trying to you know, create. It can be difficult to just make it up as you go. So with this particular painting here, I'm painting very intuitively, but I do have in my mind the idea of a pond. Uh, I like the idea of water and pond and uh, reflections, reeds coming out of it, grasses. 
splatters of water, drops of water, bugs flying around. That's sort of the ideas that are going around in my head while I'm creating this artwork out of nothing. So I'm not working with a reference photo or anything um, tangible. I'm just kind of building up layers and building up contrasts and values and textures and shapes until I'm happy. And this method of um, separating all the paper into um, different sections. So instead of just having one big piece, uh, the idea of having individual pieces of paper is that once you remove the tape and you separate these artworks into their individual A3 sizes, you're left with um, really interesting compositions and really interesting uh, little snippets of your overall painting. So I do have another video that I show this whole process of abstract painting and I will link it in the description and also I will link it up here in the corner if I remember work out how to do it. Um, this video is actually one of my most watched videos and it just goes through the same process of taping down the paper and treating the paper as one whole piece and then once you're finished you then separate the pieces and they become individual artworks. So I do this technique quite a lot because I find it really freeing. I don't have to one think about composition. I don't have to think about um, laying everything out in the right way. I can just focus all of my energy on mark making and creating interesting kind of patterns and shapes and colours and values, which is the fun part of painting as far as I'm concerned. I don't have to think of anything too particular. And it works really well with abstracts because it kind of forces you to concentrate on elements in the artwork that don't include composition um, and just have fun playing with different shapes and different layers. So I thought while I was going to show you, you know, me painting, instead of just, you know, having some music, I thought I would have a bit of a chat about abstract art and the process of creating abstract art and a few important elements that you have to have in your abstract painting in order for it to be what I would consider interesting. Now, this is just my opinion, and these are just two of the main elements that I personally use in my artwork quite a lot, uh, but these are based around uh, general design principles that a lot of artists and creatives use. No principle is more important than any other principle, but I find that I do use these two principles a lot in my work, so I thought I'd focus on talking about them today. So let's start by exploring one of the fundamental elements of abstract art, which is contrast. In, in any art, really, not just abstract, contract refers, contrast refers to the difference in values, colours, textures, shapes, or any other um, visual element within a composition. It's sort of the interplay between these contrasting elements that adds uh, dynamic and visual interest to your artwork. So contrast is important in abstract art because it allows you to guide the viewer through your composition because you don't have anything specifically tangible to look at, such as you know, a landscape, you might have the horizon or a, a road or a pathway leading the eye through the painting. With an abstract painting, you don't have any of that stuff. So you need to use things such as contrast to help the viewer decide what it is they're supposed to be looking at. Uh, it helps to create focal points, establish hierarchy and add a sense of depth. So using contrast effectively can really enhance the overall visual impact of your art and you can use uh, contrast in quite a few different ways. So value contrast means that, you know, there's lots of lights and darks uh, and the you can create a sense of depth and enhance spatial relationships with lights and darks. So you'll notice that I've used quite a dark blue background on this painting and now I'm adding highlights of lighter colours on top and it's the contrast of that lighter blue that I'm putting on top of the dark blue that's going to help create not only the effect of water but it's also adding contrast uh, and that's what's going to help to elevate the painting. Uh, so value contrast is the yeah, difference between lights and darks, but you can also have color contrast. So color contrast uh, is using things such as complementary colors, uh, how they you know, intensify when they're next to each other. You can use uh, different color schemes and uh, use certain colors to help highlight and emphasize certain areas of your painting. Uh, so, for example, in this particular painting, I've used lots of blues, but then I've also added in highlights of a lot of this ochreish yellow colour in the reeds and the grasses, because the yellow ochre colour is a contrasting colour to the blue. 
And so is that sort of orangey pinky toned color. That's a contrasting color as well. So I'm adding those in to create interesting visual elements and to add contrast. And another way you can add contrast is through textures. So um, playing with different textures can add intrigue and depth to your painting. And you can um, sort of juxtapose smooth and rough surfaces or thick marks and thin marks using different materials and things to put the paint onto the canvas or the surface. Uh, that's all going to create different textures. So I create a few different textures, mostly just with my brushes, just changing the size of the brush and getting a different mark out of that brush is going to create a different visual texture. But I also sometimes scrape my paint on, dot the paint on, um, make the paint a bit thicker in some areas and more watery in other areas. And so that contrast between the um, the thickness and the texture of the paint and the mark that I'm able to make is what makes the painting interesting as well. So remember though, when we're working with contrast, it's all about finding the right balance. So too much contrast can be overwhelming, but too little contrast may result in a flat and pretty uninspiring composition. So it can take, sometimes take quite a bit of practice to understand how to manipulate the contrast effectively uh, to create a visually appealing art, um, abstract artwork. But it's definitely something worth paying attention to and making sure that you are accommodating when you are practicing your painting. So another element that I use a lot in my artwork is rhythm and it's a really uh, powerful tool that can bring flow and movement to your artwork. It creates a visual harmony and captivates the viewer's eye with a sense of motion and repetition. Uh, so when I'm talking about rhythm in abstract art, I'm referring to a pattern or a repetition of visual elements, things like lines and shapes and colours. Uh, the repetition can create sort of a visual kind of tempo and a sense of organised movement throughout your composition. Uh, so rhythm is important in abstract art because it adds a dynamic quality to your artwork and it engages the viewer and establishes a visual narrative. So a few ways that I use rhythm in my artwork is repeating a lot of the same sort of brush strokes. For example, the clusters of reeds in this painting, you'll notice that I've used a similar sort of brush strokes wherever I'm representing these reeds. I've got these like layering of thin line marks and then I repeat that in a few different places. And also the rhythm of the, the water and the marks that I'm making in the water area. Everything is very uh, horizontal with my brush strokes and I'm making sure that I have that flow happening. But the repetition of the brush strokes uh, is all over generally the same. So that's how I'm creating rhythm and movement. So you can use uh, things like dots or um, a rhythm of a certain mark that you know goes from one side of the canvas to the other to help draw the eye from one side of the canvas to the other. Uh, so there's a few different ways that you can use um, rhythm. So things like repetition, for example. So um, specific shapes, lines, colours can create a rhythmic flow within your composition. And also uh, repetition of a certain elements really helps to help um, the consistency in the artwork and a sense of unity. So instead of doing a lot of really random marks that don't connect to each other or don't make sense, try and repeat the same mark in a few areas. So if you do some sort of short dash type of marks in one area of the painting, make sure that you repeat those dashes in another part of the painting. Uh, if you make a sort of circular swirling motion in one part of your painting, maybe add that similar swirling motion in another part of the painting. Uh, another way to get good rhythm is just with brush stroke variation. So um, the, the way that you're moving your brush around the canvas using you know a combination of short, long or thick or thin brush strokes can add a sense of movement and rhythm to your artwork as well. So that works the same way, uh, for example, when I'm talking about the water elements in my paintings, um, this sort of the motion of the brush, I'm sort of uh, trying to represent those ripples and little pools of water. And so I'm making sure that I repeat that um, the variation of those brush strokes all over the canvas. And another way you can create rhythm is just through colour placement. So strategically placing colours within the composition can create a visual rhythm. So it can help the eye jump from one place to another. Those things like complementary colours, contrasting colours um, can help move the eye around because those colours jump out from the background and from all the other colours in the area. So the eye will naturally jump from, you know, that say, for example, you've got a really dark, um, let's say a dark, 
purple background and you're using your yellows as your contrasting color, wherever you put that yellow, it's going to draw the viewer's eye because of the repetition of that color. So that's just, you know, another way of creating interest. So rhythm is a really versatile element that can be incorporated in a lot of different ways. So definitely experiment with different techniques and find out a style that resonates with you and your artistic vision. But it's definitely something that I'm conscious of when I'm painting. So I just played around with some abstracts and I've sort of been craving this for a really long time. I've been craving doing some really loose... Um, sort of watery pond inspired um, abstract paintings. <laughs> so I've just got back from a week long workshop in Queensland. I was focusing on a lot of landscapes, a lot of still life, a lot of technical stuff. Um, and so I just wanted to come home and um, release a bit of creativity and not think so much about what I'm doing. And so these are the ones I just showed you a little bit of me creating them. So I thought I'd show you the finished pieces. So these are A3 sized bits of paper and you'll see that I had them all taped up together and I just treated it like one giant painting. Uh, I actually really liked how they all looked as one giant painting. Um, but sometimes in order to uh, be more creative and to sort of pursue more of an abstract vision you have to destroy what you've created and so I untaped everything and these are the individual paintings that I've ended up with so some of these I think I need a little bit more development um, like some areas I could probably lighten up a little bit and so I might work on these a little bit more but for now I'm quite happy with how they look so I just thought I'd show you the results so there's this one here this has got like an interesting composition. It's got this circle space in the middle, but then these reeds and things happening either side. Uh, this one here has, I like all this color that's happening down here in the foreground. It almost has like a, a coral reef feeling to it, even though it's meant to be more of a pond sort of based abstract with you know plants and things around the edge of the pond. But yeah, it's definitely got a very coral feel to it. Uh, I think this one is probably one of my favourites. Uh, I really like the the heavy vertical shapes that are up here and then these reflections. Uh, they're still, it's very abstract, but it still has that feeling of, you know, this is the water's edge where all those plants are and this is the water reflecting and, you know, you can see bits and pieces and it's got, you know, some nice details in it. And I like the colour balance in this as well. So yeah, I think this is probably one of my favorites. This one is interesting as well. I added these in after I'd already um, separated them because I felt like it needed just a little bit more level of detail, but it's kind of like a little corner of a pond with, you know, some twigs and sticks and things coming out. It's got like a nice movement in it, in this one. Uh, this one here has the most kind of water space in it with just a little bit of foliage either side which is an interesting composition which is one of the benefits of taping a whole heap of paper together and just treating it like one you, when you pull it apart you end up with these compositions that are, are quite interesting that you wouldn't necessarily have thought of before you you know taped it all together this one i like as well i like this this shape that's happening in here um i think i could probably bring in some more highlights up here maybe I'm not sure about this dark area I really like this um, so I can get that to focus a bit closer yeah I love all the these textures and reeds and things that are in here and that yellow ochre color and um, yeah it's got an yeah, interesting composition to it as well so these are just um a bit of fun and yeah like I said I might play around with but I'm not going to do that today I'm going to just sort of let them sit and dry completely because some of them are a bit tacky and then I'll see whether I feel like putting more stuff on them later on but yeah that's what I've been doing in the studio today so far today anyway I did paint a few more artworks during this studio session and I'm going to put together a video for my patrons uh, showing uh, some behind the scenes of step by step how I created them and what I thought of them and some of the process behind them. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing that or some other videos that are not available anywhere else, um, you can sign up to my patron. 
there is a link in the description to my Patreon account and you can join and yeah, <laughs> see it over there. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do that. And also drop a like because it really helps spread my channel around to other people that might be interested in watching these videos. And that would be really helpful for me too. So I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.